Okay, so this is going to be chapter nine. Share my screen and let's get through this. So this is blood, lymphatic, and immune system. So a few things that I will go over. What is blood, right? So blood is basically body tissue that's composed of elements like cells that are suspended in plasma, which is the liquid part of it. So the elements that are formed are red blood cells, erythrocytes, white blood cells, leukocytes, and then platelets or thrombocytes. And the plasma part of it is basically made up of water, some proteins like albumin, gases, nutrients, salts, and some other things, okay? Erythrocytes are red blood cells. Red blood cells do not contain hemoglobin. So what they do is they attach on to heme that makes them become hemoglobin, okay? And the heme part, which is the iron, allows for them to grab onto O2 and CO2 and carry it through the blood. Okay. Leukocytes, your white blood cells, and you have five different types of leukocytes. They are all about your immune system. And, you know, they do different functions, but they protect you from disease, basically. Neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, monocytes, and lymphocytes. And then your platelets, which are thrombocytes, they're really not cells per se, but they're kind of like fragments. Um, and they help with the clotting process. And the clotting process has a lot of steps in it that, you know, there, you have 12 clotting factors. You have fibrinogen and prothrombin, which stimulates thrombin. All of those things work together to allow your blood to clot so that you don't bleed to death if you get a cut. Then you have your lymphatic system. Just remember this, everywhere that you have blood, and blood vessels, you have lymph. So you have a whole circulatory system of lymph vessels, lymph fluid, lymph nodes, clusters of lymph nodes in certain strategically placed areas of your body, and then some accessory organs of that lymphatic system, which are your tonsils, thymus gland, and your spleen, okay? And so these blood vessels carry lymphatic fluid and there are certain things that are in lymphatic fluid that assist with either killing viruses or bacteria or things that you know get into your body. So the lymph system works in adjunct with the, the immune system. Um, so you have two types of defenses. Um, the defenses that we have that we have from birth, our skin is a defense, right? If skin is broken, things can get in. Our tears and our saliva actually have certain enzymes in them that are antibacterial. And your stomach has hydrochloric acid in it, which if we could take the acid out of your stomach and put it into like a barrel, we could decompose a body, which is pretty cool. Um, and those are, these are just barriers to protect us from things getting inside of us that can make us sick. And then we have acquired immunity, right? And acquired immunity, can either be artificially acquired or naturally acquired. I'm not gonna get into humoral and cellular immunity, but if you get a vaccine, so you get the COVID-19 vaccine, what we're doing is we're giving you something injected into you that allows your body to recognize it and then develop antibodies against it. it usually takes about two weeks for your body to do that if you're a normal average healthy adult. Um, so that is artificially acquired immunity. Naturally acquired immunity. When I was 13, I had the chicken pox. I'm immune against the chicken pox now, right? So that's naturally acquired immunity. So your, your, your immune system is amazing, right? Because it actually has the ability to recognize what belongs to you and what doesn't, right? Things that are harmful are called antigens. The things that your body makes are called antibodies, that are specific to the antigen. So MMR, measles, mumps, rubella, you get the shot. Your body has antibodies to the antigen of measles and mumps and rubella. So if you get exposed, your antibodies will kill it and you won't get sick, right? So it's got a memory. Um, the three main formed elements in blood are your red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Erythrocytes, leukocytes, and platelets. Leukocytes fight infection and platelets help your blood clot. The lymphatic system is all about maintains fluid balance and it helps with defending you against infection. 
Uh, and we're not, I'm not going to get into how it works and what the major cells are. Um, you don't really need to know all of this, but I'm going to get to the words that you do need to know. And here we are. So the combining forms, blood is either hemo or hemato. Right? A cell is cyto. For example, cytology is the study of cells. Red is erythro. So erythrocytes are red blood cells. And white is leuco. White blood cells are leukocytes. Tonsils, tonsillo. Your glands are adeno. So your lymphat lymphatic glands are adeno. Your thymus gland would be thymo and your spleen would be spleno or spleno, which I, they don't have that here, but I'm adding that because it just is and it should be there. A blood clot would be thrombo. If something is irregular all over the place, poikilo. Spleen, again, spleno or spleno, the splenomegaly. And your serum of your blood would be sero, like serology is the study of your serum. Nucleus is nucleo. Iron is sidero. You'll never see that. Lymph gland, lymph adeno. Lymphadenopathy would be a problem or disease with the lymph glands. Your lymph vessels, lymph angio. And then they have some medical word exercises. The fear of blood is hemophobia, a red blood cells and erythrocyte. And the separation or destruction or loosening or breaking apart of a blood clot is thrombolysis. A white blood cell is a leukocyte. The production of blood in your body is called hematopoiesis. And if anything stands still and doesn't move, that would be stasis. So blood that stands still, which is bad because when blood sits, blood clots, that would be hemostasis. The study of the shape or structure of something is morphology. A decrease in your platelets would be thrombocytopenia. And if we're talking about something that originated in bone marrow, myelogenic. Pertaining to an embryonic cell would be blastic. Osteoblasts are the cells that make bone, for example. A tumor that's composed of blood, hematoma, or something resembling a thrombus would be thromboid. Don't worry about the cytorapenia because it's, it's basically called iron deficiency anemia. Um, a cell that swallows or eats things uh, is a phagocyte. I think of them as Pac-Man, if anybody knows what Pac-Man the game was. Uh, phagocytes will go in and engulf foreign objects in your body like bacteria, basically eat them up, destroy them. Disease of a lymph gland, lymphadenopathy. Enlargement of the spleen, splenomegaly. Formation or production of lymph, lymphopoiesis. And inflammation of a lymph gland would be lymphadenitis. Disease of lymph, lymphadenopathy, somebody who specializes in immunity, is an immunologist, a tumor of the thymus gland, thioma. A red blood cell typically that is too large is a macrocyte, one that's too small. Anybody wanna take a guess? What is a small red blood cell? Come on, somebody. If macro is a large red blood cell, then a small one. Microcyte. Microcyte, Microcyte. good. Micro. Right. Yep, there you go, kids, that's right. A deficiency in red blood cells is, is called technically erythrocytopenia and leukocytopenia, but typically the words that you will hear will be anemia and leukopenia, right? So here's where this chapter gets into the diseases. So uh, I do have video lectures that are up on YouTube, which I will direct you to if you want to get into in pernicious anemia, macrocytic anemia, sickle cell anemia, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this chapter goes through all the disease processes, including the cancers like leukemia, um, lymphedema. Uh, it goes through um, HIV, which is an immune problem and Kaposi sarcoma, which is our, their tumors that are associated with the HIV AIDS. Um, systemic lupus erythematosus, which is an autoimmune disorder, 
uh, thrombocytopenia, so on and on, disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, DIC. I'm not going to get into a lecture on all of these for medical terminology. So I am going to stop this lecture here because the words that we've gone through so far, you they're the ones that you need to know, okay? Um, some of these say incision of the tonsils. We don't do a tonsillotomy, but we do very commonly do a tonsillectomy, which would be removal of the tonsil tonsils. So I'm going to stop here. So I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to stop the recording. And